Hi everyone. Uh, right now I want to tell you an embarrassing story, but I get through my embarrassment by laughing at myself. And uh, also, I'm not as embarrassed about this as I used to be because I can look back at it now and see that I did everything that I could possibly do to avoid what happened happening. Um, and I've improved it and I'm working on it never happening again. But I'd like to tell you about uh, the two times that mental illness caused me to have to drop out of college. Um, so I have bipolar 1 disorder along with anxiety and ADHD. Those things typically go along with bipolar 1 and uh, exhibit kind of differently in women than men. Um, but it's always been how I am. I just got the diagnosis, got to treat it, and I've been back on track. But these stories of me dropping out take place um, before I was properly medicated. Um, I did go to college for a semester successfully once without dropping out, um, but I continue. I, I didn't continue to go because I relocated somewhere um, and chose to work rather than going to school. But that one worked out. But there are two times that I have dropped out of college due to being bipolar. Uh, both times were due to a manic episode. Both times I was not medicated correctly. Uh, and both times I was a teenager still. So the first time that I dropped out of college due to mental illness, it was, um, I was, I had graduated high school early. So I graduated in December of 15, of 14, but I technically, like my graduation date and diploma says May 2015 still. Uh, so after that summer, when all graduation happened and everything, I was set to go to uh, my dream school in Kentucky. Uh, I was very, I was kind of in shambles. I spent the last two years of high school doing homebound, which is basically like being homeschooled, except you're still enrolled in the public school, and a representative just brings your work from your classes at school to your home to do it if you are ill. Uh, that's basically the only reason I was able to graduate at the time I was uh, trying to see a doctor who would actually care and listen to me. I was having multiple panic attacks every day, couldn't sit in the classroom. I mean, I was having a really hard time. Um, I don't think that I had received my bipolar diagnosis at that point yet, but uh, definitely by the time that I started college uh, after that summer, I did have the bipolar diagnosis. And I was on some medication, but I was not on the right medication. I was just beginning to see uh, a doctor I'd been waiting to get into when I turned 18. And um, so I got all moved in in college. I was super excited. And uh, the day that I was moving in, I was super jazzed. And I have learned now that stress is a trigger for my manic episodes. I did not know that at the time. I did not know what triggered what. It was all new to me. But uh, I was under a lot of stress, clearly. I mean, moving away to a different state and going to college is stressful. So the night after my parents and everybody else had moved in, I stayed up all night rearranging things and decorating my room as I please. And uh, I had something to do for an orientation the next day pretty early. So I just stayed up all night and uh, entertained myself, unpacked, whatnot. Um, and so went to orientation the next day, didn't feel that great, but I was still pretty jazzed, still pretty pretty up there. And at this point, I didn't even know... Okay, at this point, I was diagnosed bipolar 2. I had not yet had a manic episode, um, a full manic episode. This is what got, di got me diagnosed with bipolar 1. So I was jazzed, I was manic, but I didn't know it. Um, I... Uh, picked up some Adderall from a fellow student who was prescribed it. I was not at the time. Um, and I took that and it helped me stay up the next night. And, you know, losing one night of sleep is enough, but losing two is quite a bit. So after I lost the second night, I started to just kind of come unraveled. And, um, that night it was a weekend and there was a party and I went and I partied and I partied hard. And it's not like me to really lose myself and party hard like I did, especially considering I was 18 years old. I mean, it's normal, I guess, when you're 18 and you first go to college, the first weekend you're going to go to parties. But I really, 
really overdid it and it was really out of character for me and the people who I had recently made friends with moving in who barely even knew me were telling me they were concerned about me because it seemed totally bonkers while I was acting and it was I was manic and I didn't know it so uh, along came the third night of no sleep and I, I just totally went into psychosis and I had never experienced psychosis before I didn't know how to unlock my door to my dorm room I didn't know how to use the elevator. I just had to call my mom and just cry because I, I, I had lost, my brain was in shambles. I was in absolute shambles. And I couldn't control. I had no self-control. I couldn't control what I was doing. I was out of control of my emotions. So um, I ended up dropping out because I could, I couldn't go to class that next week. I couldn't keep myself together. I had no control. It was disappointing, and with it being my dream college, and you know, my dad had wanted me to pursue going to my dream college, I was afraid of disappointing him, and when I got back, uh, it was totally embarrassing to have to move all my stuff out, literally like days after I had just moved all of it in, and everybody was wondering what happened, and she go crazy, or did she do a bunch of drugs, what happened, what happened, what happened, and I just didn't want to talk to anyone, I wanted to get out of there, that's not where I belonged at that point. Um, Packed up all my stuff, moved, um, got back, had some medication adjustments, got my diagnosis changed to uh, bipolar 1, um, and uh, I was devastated. I, I was devastated that I couldn't do it. That was my dream school. I thought all my dreams and promises of a better life would come from there, um, and I sank into the deepest depression I ever have been in, and I believe that I ever will be in. I stayed in my parents' house. I did not leave the couch. I slept with my mother every night. I cried constantly. I showered maybe once every week and a half. Uh, my mom would have to wash my hair in the sink. Uh, I was just getting up out of a laying down position to go to the bathroom. I was, I don't know my eating habits. I mean, I couldn't pay attention to anything. I was devastated and I was in a huge depressive episode um, after that depressive episode really got as bad as my mom could see me enter it I had just given up I was just gonna lay there and die on the couch to be honest with you uh, she took me to my psychiatrist and went with me and was like this has to stop and he adjusted my meds started me on an ADHD medication to kind of get me up and going and eventually I kind of became better. Uh, I spent the next couple months healing, kind of uh, adjusting to my new uh, lifestyle, got on some different meds, and I was able to function. I wasn't perfect. But I decided I wanted to try again uh, the following fall because I didn't want to give up on that college yet. That was my dream college. So, um, I did what I had to do, stayed my hometown with my parents, took care of myself, kept up with my medicine reg regimens, yeah, um, and just really made sure that I was on track to go back to school because school was just my top priority above everything else, and that was a mistake that I made. My health should have been the top priority, and it was not. Um, so time passed. I thought I was doing fairly well and then um, came the time for me to go to uh, school again and I was going to go to the same school and this school is known for being very, it's a private school, very difficult um, and in my opinion now that I have tried it twice and stepped back it's unnecessarily difficult and very hard on the soul. <laughs> um, but I tried and tried again. Um, went, got moved in, you know, uh, decided who I was going to keep in my close circle, who was going to keep an eye out for me, who was going to tell me if something was going off kilter. I uh, did a good job at monitoring myself, calling my doctor when something was up. I had an excellent, excellent school counselor who uh, would have appointments with me every week, but then if I needed to talk to her, and she was so open, and you know, the whole guidance center, they were so there for me. My advisor was so there for me. All of my professors were so there for me. They really, I told them about what happened last year. Uh, they were really there for me. Um, 
but I was having just anxiety issues being away from home and I'm unsure why exactly. I think that I was just afraid that what happened last time was going to happen again, even though I was doing so much remarkably better. Um, but towards the end of the semester, I was kind of counting down the days until I didn't have to go there anymore because I realized the school was way too stressful for me and I could continue going to college, but not there. And so I was just gonna finish out the semester and little did I know how absolutely fucking hard that would be. Um, I tried so hard. I was counting down the days. I was calling my mom about six times a day talking about, oh, just this many days, this many hours. I mean, I was taking my day hour by hour to just make it through. I mean, it, I, it was insane the amount of stress, anxiety, depression I was feeling. And then, um, as I said before, stress is my number one trigger of a manic episode. And at the very tail end of December, the very tail end of the semester, I had finally almost made it, and then I had another manic episode. And as I've said before about manic episodes, I don't want to go into detail, but picture the worst, sex, drugs, rock and roll, uh, stop going to class. I, I don't know how I made it through the semester with that unexpectedly happening, but um, it helped me realize that stress is one of my triggers. Uh, the guidance center and my counselor wanted to hospitalize me, and I was able to get myself out of that one. I've had very bad experiences being hospitalized, um, and uh, I ended up getting into some uh, academic probation trouble because I got busted with weed during the manic episode, and I freaked out on the administration and said, oh, well, I'm never coming back anyway. And, you know, it was super embarrassing. I made an absolute fool out of myself. And I mentioned this in another video, I think, but after that semester was over and I moved back home, I was kind of calmed down, but not all the way. And that's when I started lithium, which saved my life. Um, and since then, I've not tried college again, but in this upcoming January, I do have plans to move back to Kentucky, a different part of Kentucky, and give college one more try, because I truly think I have my shit together now. Um, but I wanted to share this story because I am in several mental health groups, bipolar, ADHD, all sorts of things uh, on Facebook. And people talk about, you know, how are you supposed to go to college? How are you supposed to finish school when you have these illnesses? Is it even possible? And I hope that one day I can tell you that it is possible if you get your shit together and you take responsibility for yourself. You know, I've had to do so much inner work to even get to the point where I could fill out an application to go back to school, where I could even think about sitting in a classroom again. But I want others to know it's okay to try and fail. I am glad that I tried that second time even though I ended up dropping out again. I'm glad that I tried the first time even though I only made it a few days before I dropped out. But it's okay to try and try and try again. If I go this January and I only last half the semester, then you're damn right I'm going to try again in the fall. Because getting a degree is something that is important to me especially in psychology, and I'm going to make sure that it happens in bipolar or lupus or anything is not going to get in my way of that, and I will keep trying, even if I have to make a video a year from now talking about the seven times I dropped out of college. So don't be ashamed of yourself. Be proud of yourself that you tried. Be proud of yourself that you know your limits. Because I'm finally to the point where I am not just so damn ashamed of myself for dropping out. Because I had to do that to protect myself. So, thank you for listening to this rant and this story. I hope that this can encourage some of you. Or maybe let some of you uh, know why I have such a shoddy uh, educational record. But I will see you all later.